Clean governance, strong leadership, expanding infrastructure, and policy initiatives have launched the Philippines onto a quicker economic trajectory. However, as with any developing economies, the trickle-down effect has yet to fully take hold, and social ills that hinder growth, poverty, inequality, and unemployment must be tackled head-on. The Philippines' future seems bright because it has a young, rising workforce that speaks English, high remittances from abroad, and household debt that is among the lowest in Asia. Although the Philippine economy progressed slowly until the 21st century, it has grown significantly in the previous two decades. Its average annual growth rate was 4.6% between 2000 and 2009, and it increased to 6.4% between 2010 and 2019. This has increased the country's gross national income per capita from less than $1,000 in 2000 to $3,160 in 2021, with more increases projected. The Philippines' economy has grown fast since the 2000s, although the country remains a developing economy with a per capita GDP far below that of wealthy countries. The country's economy has become more reliant on services, which currently account for more over 61% of GDP. Remittances from Filipino employees working overseas currently contribute for around 10% of the country's total GDP. Agriculture The agricultural, manufacturing, and service sectors account for the majority of the gross domestic product GDP. Agriculture contributed roughly 10% of GDP in 2021, the lowest contribution in the country's history. To put this in context, agriculture contributed one quarter of the country's GDP in the 1980s and nearly one third in the 1970s. Meanwhile, the industrial and service sectors made up 30.8% and 60% of the total. It is also worth noting that the share of industrial output has continuously declined over time, although the services sector has grown significantly. The Philippines' economy has gradually transitioned from agrarian to industrial and service-oriented. Agriculture accounted for over one-fourth of the nation's GDP in 1980, but that figure has since fallen to 9.3%. Forestry, hunting, fishing, crop cultivation, and animal production all fall within the agricultural sector. Approximately 25% of the workforce is employed in this industry. Sugarcane, coconuts, rice, corn, bananas, cassava, manioc, tapioca, pineapples, mangoes, pork, eggs, beef, and fish are the primary agricultural products. Things appear to be changing, though, since the government is currently significantly investing in this area. The government is supporting programs run by the Department of Agriculture DA, in an effort to increase food security, rural income, and infrastructure. Farm mechanization, national organic agriculture, and post-harvest development are some DA projects aimed at reducing post-harvest losses while also lowering product prices and stabilizing labor costs. The Philippine Rural Development Project, which is financed by the World Bank, aims to enhance rural infrastructure. Aside from these, the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation is aggressively expanding a crop insurance plan that will cover the costs of disastrous weather phenomena. Given these and other factors, the Philippines' agricultural industry should see an increase in productivity and output in the near future. The industrial sector has contributed a respectable and consistent contribution to the Philippines' GDP over the years, peaking at almost 45% in the 1980s and falling to less than 28% in 2021. Industry This industry still employs approximately one-fifth of the workforce in the country. The Philippine government is modernizing the country's infrastructure in order to attract foreign direct investment FDI. The country has established a number of economic zones, which have attracted a large number of foreign enterprises. According to rumors, several corporations are planning to shift production from China, their traditional base, to the Philippines and adjacent Southeast Asian countries. These steps will aid in the long-term expansion of the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing and farming are two of the Philippines' most important industries. 
mining and mineral processing, medicines, shipbuilding, electronics, and semiconductors are the focus sectors within manufacturing. The Philippines has one of the most appealing pharmaceutical marketplaces in Asia-Pacific. The Philippines is also rich in metallic resources, and the country has drawn many foreign corporations to its shores. Among them are BHP and Sumitomo Metal Mining Co. Ltd. Furthermore, the entry of foreign players has aided the country in capitalizing on its shipbuilding potential. The island country is the fourth-largest shipping country in the world, after China, South Korea, and Japan. The Philippines' electronic sector has been active since the mid-1970s, when businesses from the West were looking to shift production sites to counteract growing production costs. Since then, the Philippines' electronics industry has only gotten larger and stronger, and it is now a key component of the country's economy in terms of job generation, tax contribution, exports, household income, and GDP share. Processed fruits and vegetables, seaweeds, tropical fruit purees and juices, fresh tropical fruits, mango seed oil, sugar plantation, bioethanol, biofuels, and cocoa methyl ester are the primary components of the agribusiness. Service sector The Philippines service sector surpassed the industrial sector in terms of GDP contribution in the early 1980s, rising from 36% in 1980 to more than 60% by 2020. The services sector now employs a larger proportion of the country's workers than the agricultural and industrial sectors combined. Business Process Outsourcing BPO, has played a crucial influence in the growth of the service sector. The Philippines was able to grow its BPO sector due to the availability of professionals who spoke the necessary languages, as well as an interest in American culture, as the country is the Philippines' largest BPO market and the customer service-oriented nature of the professionals in the industry. Tourism is the second most important service sector component, with a long history of moderate growth. Tourism in the Philippines has not been able to fully utilize its resources, and it has fallen behind its regional counterparts such as Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand in attracting international tourists. Inadequate infrastructure, airports, poor rail and road connectivity, as well as a lack of tourist services and facilities, are among the primary causes. Remittance Another category is export services, which comprise services provided by Filipinos working as permanent, temporary, or irregular migrants outside the nation. Remittances from Filipinos working overseas have increased significantly throughout the years. Their jobs have also changed structurally, from low-wage service jobs to increasingly professional jobs requiring higher degrees. Remittances from abroad remain high, accounting for roughly 10% of GDP. This figure has risen from 8.5% in 2000, 3.3% in 1990, and 1.93% 1 in 1980. On the strength of robust overseas revenues, the rise of the BPO business is considered as a driver of consumer spending and job creation. This is proving to be a terrific alternate method for the country. The rising base and growth potential of the BPO industry would not only help the country's service sector, but may also induce some of its citizens to return home, thereby mitigating the possibility of a reduction in remittances from its citizens overseas. Semiconductors and electrical items account for more than 40% of the Philippines' total exports. This is followed by a variety of produced and handcrafted goods, 16%. The Philippines is classified as a developing economy by the World Bank. The World Bank classifies developing economies as having lower per capita GDPs, a less developed level of industrialization and technological growth, and a lower Human Development Index HDI, than more developed countries. A balanced and harmonic growth of agriculture, industry, and services sectors is vital for any economy to advance. Improvements in the tertiary sectors of the economy will automatically follow once these are achieved. In terms of economic and social growth, the Philippines has trailed behind its wealthier Southeast Asian and East Asian neighbors for decades. But those were the days. 
Today, it looks that the Philippines is firmly on the path of growth and sustainability.